Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be constructing a beautiful garden and harvesting strawberries in this tiny game, Strawberry Sunset. Strawberry Sunset here is just a small deck of cards, but in it the cards will be behaving like tiles. You will be drafting those cards and you will be using them to build up your strawberry patch by overlaying cards on top of each other, having roots connect to flowers and connect to strawberries, having water features put in, and avoiding gravel that is going to give you negative points. Very simple little game. The box here says 10 to 20 minutes, and that's right. It's a very short, punchy game, very easy to get to the table and finish quickly. So, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to give you an overview of the game, and I'll see you on the other side. So here we've got the game set up, just a small deck of cards, for three players. And the reason that is, is because you remove some cards based on the number of players. They're all in for four, remove a few for three, remove a few more for just two players. Everybody can have one of these player aids with the scoring breakdown of everything. Be aware, you uh, they, they give you an illustration on the back of this to help you with that. Though there's a couple of small uh, sort of typos or, or misinterpretations of how things should score, but it's pretty straightforward. You should be able to grasp it. And then they also have the rules, which just come on a few other cards, and uh, then they give you basically how to play. I do wish these were numbered with a little number in the bottom so you could, you know, quote unquote, put the rule book back together in order again. And there's also in here some advanced scoring. So this scoring here is the same as this player aid, but then on the back, there's some advanced scoring you can choose to play with instead. So how's the game work? Okay, well, again, for three players, and this is the scoring we're using. On your turn, or rather to set up the game, everybody is given one of these morning cards, okay? So that's what your uh, display begins with, one of these morning cards. And then on your turn, you are going to do, I'll set this guy way out here, you're going to do one of two things. You can draw two cards, take one, add it to your display, and then discard the other one into its appropriate discard pile. Or you can just take the top one from any of the discard piles and add it onto your display. And when I say multiple discard piles, I mean because there are three stages of cards. You've got these which are the, the early ones. They mostly feature the roots of the strawberry plants. Then in the middle, you've got these that feature the flowers. And then at the end, the fruit themselves in the evening here. All right. So let's say uh, this is me right here. I want to take a look at that card. So the card features a wall right here in the middle. It's broken up into four quadrants. And this one has gravel. That's bad. Okay. Gravel is negative two points if it's still showing at the end. You've got a water feature, which are good. Those are three points. And then some roots right here. So I would draw two cards. I would take a look at these. And then I would add one of them to my uh, display and discard the other. So let's say I don't want this one. I'm going to discard that. And then I have to add this one on here. I cannot do it sideways like this. It has to have the correct orientation. Though I can turn it upside down. That's fine. And it has to cover something. I can cover a single quadrant. I could cover two quadrants. I could even cover an entire card, ideally, later on. But you can even do that. Now, what am I looking to do? Well, I want to get some roots in there so that later I can attach flowers to roots. And then later I can attach the fruit to the flower to the root, which is how you get the entire plant and five victory points for that. I'm also looking to have a long path. I guess it's not a wall, it's a, it's a walking path. So you want to have one that is quite long because for every section, it is going to give me one victory point just for the longest wall, okay? Or longest path. All right, so what am I going to do with this one? Well, um, I might put it here like this, let's say. I'm going to do that, okay? And then the next player would go, and they can draw this one and add it onto their display, which they might do. They'll just take that and put it right there like this. You do have a little indicator in the center of the cards, a little diamond that'll let you know where the four quadrants are split. Okay, so it's, it's a nice visual aid. 
And then the next player would go, they would draw two, they would keep one and play it, so perhaps they'll do that, like so. Discarding the other one into its own, its own discard pile. Now eventually, you'll get to these. And you will see that these have flowers, the flowers. So I might, um, you know, I consider putting one of these over here, then if I put it there, that's a problem because I'm covering up my, uh, my water um, feature. So maybe I'll do it like that, but I am losing a root if I do that. But, you know, that might have to be it. So I'll do that like so. There we go. And then discard the other one. Now I've got this root touching this flower section. I've got a pretty long path. One, two, three, four, like so. So this is uh, good so far. And then eventually, once you've got this built up, you'll get the strawberries. And then those you are trying to attach so that the entire plant is made. Root to flower to strawberry. And this root here that splits off could support another one, by the way. So I might have that. And then uh, perhaps, oh, let's see. This is no good, this one. Ooh, that would be bad. Perhaps this one. So there we go. Now I've got one entire plant there, one entire plant there. The longest uh, path is one, two, three, four. Not great. Uh, and I've got some gravel showing here, which is going to be bad, but I do have a water feature, which is good. So you continue doing this until the deck of cards has run out, even if the discards haven't run out. And then you score all those things I showed you right here on the card. Whoever has the highest score, of course, is the winner of the game. Now let's briefly talk about, oh, I keep thinking it's on the back, uh, the um, advanced scoring, okay? So the advanced scoring features a couple of extra things. So the sculpture gardens, which are these spaces that don't really do or mean anything in the normal game, well, those are going to be, um, have the ability to convert your gravel into positive points instead of negative points. So instead of losing two points for each gravel, you instead gain a point for each. That's okay. It's a lot of trouble. But, you know, to, to gain a point instead of losing two, basically a three-point swing, because they have to be next to each other and all that, but it's okay. Then we've got uh, here about the wildlife, which is if you have two of the bee um, hives or two of the bird baths, you are going to get extra points. So you gain three extra points, uh, if you have two, and if you have all three of them, you gain six extra points. Oh, and there's four. There's four of each. You get nine extra points if you have all four. That I like. I like that scoring, um, even even without using the sculpture garden thing, which is that's a sculpture and that's the gravel. And then lastly, the reflecting pools make your water features a little more interesting because a single water feature would be three points, same as always. But if you have two of them next to each other, like that, now they're worth five apiece. So if you can have more than one together, they now are a pool instead of just a little water feature, and they're worth five points apiece. So that is the difference in the scoring if you choose to play like that. Also, if you're doing that scoring, then the game will be over, not just when the deck runs out, but when the deck runs out and at least one of the discard piles is also empty and has run out. So there you go. That's basically how the game works. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. The box of the game here says at the top a sweet and simple card game. And I think that's right on both counts. This is a sweet little game. Very simple, very easy to understand and play. And it is just custom made to be taken with, right? It's so tiny. It's very portable high quality components that are going to survive being thrown into a backpack or being, you know, made part of your packing if you're going somewhere and you can just pull this out and play as long as you have a surface you can play on. Now, that is part of the deal here. It's not the kind of game that uh, will not require you to be somewhere where you can play. It will. You, you need a surface that can hold these cards and a surface that will keep them sturdy because these uh, little devils are pretty slippery 
but the game is certainly very portable. Let's go ahead and break it down a little more, all right? So I'm gonna start with theme and setting at the top. It's beautiful, it's serene, it's attractive. Um, there simply cannot be any objections to a gorgeous little theme like this and the, the thematic trappings of what's going on in it. So that's lovely. The aesthetics, fantastic card stock. I mean, the cards in this game are really, really good quality. They are linen finished, they have a great snap, great thickness, fantastic uh, uh, printing on these. The box is fine. Now mine I've kept in the plastic, so you know you take off the little opening, uh, opening the cellophane, you know, you take off the little line, and then just the top came off. I've chosen to keep it in the cellophane on the bottom. I think it's gonna help, help uh, sort of keep it, you know, in, in good condition. You might want to do that yourself. Um, but the box itself is fine. Certainly not as good as the cards, but it doesn't need to be. The rules, like I said in the overview, I wish were numbered. But it's interesting that they chose to print them just on more cards. I think it'll give them longevity. And it's certainly way easier to fit it back in here than if this was a small piece of paper quad folded or something and then shoved in there. So this is good. I just wish they had numbered the rules, even though there's not that many cards, just for the sake of simplicity. You know, um, I understand that technically this is the rules. That's it. And this is scoring. And this is an appendix. So... The cards are named different things, but they do have a logical progression, right? I mean, there's rules first, then scoring, and then the appendix is at the end. So they could have been numbered. Replay value. Replay value is okay. This is a surprisingly good little game, and I am giving this a positive review. But the replay value, the game is very small, and you're basically accomplishing, like, three things and avoiding one thing, right? So once you learn what works and doesn't work, Two things happen. You are just sort of striving to achieve those things. You know, getting this works, uh, and so I'm going to go for that, and and uh, knowing, oh, I need to build a card here so I can build on top of it later. Like, just things you'll learn over, like, a couple of plays of this, okay? So that, uh, and just sort of performing, and then luck of the draw becomes a little more important once you know what works and doesn't work. So the replay value is fine. It's okay, you will replay this. Again, it's what it's made for is to be pulled out and quickly played over 10 minutes and then you're done with it. You pack it up, put it back in here, put it in your pocket, great, you're done, you know. For that uh, and sort of the occasional break from whatever you're waiting on and you have 10 minutes to kill, yes, absolutely. Is the game concept, uh, does it evolve? Is it revolutionary? Does it... Uh, continue to reveal new possibilities after, say, 10 plays? I don't think so, but, um, you know, your mileage there may vary. Okay, game arc. It's very nice tension in this. The game is quite short, again. And so the three decks, boom, 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 are going to run out quickly. And you can definitely get the sense of progression. Like, when you hit stage two, there might be some of, some of the stage one cards sitting in the discard pile. Uh, the compost pile, they call it. So there might be some available, but at that point, once you've hit that stage two, do you feel like you've got enough roots to support getting you through the second stage and then finally getting some strawberries down? Do you need to continue drawing from that older discard pile and making sure the roots you've got will carry you through the end of the game? I like that. That's nice tension, great progression. So the uh, the game arc really works. You know, you that that sort of cadence of oh man, I didn't have enough. I didn't do enough in the first stage. To now in the third stage, get enough strawberry plants completed. So that's neat. Ease of play. It's fine. It's good. Um, the cards are slippery, like I said. They're very high quality, but if you're playing with folks that uh, where they are, you know, perhaps not extremely careful or they simply can't put these down with a lot of, uh, of specificity, then it might get messy. You know, it can splay out 
And if it starts to get a little loosey-goosey, it's going to be a little tricky and just visually messy. If that's not a problem, then, you know, you should be all right. And, uh, again, the ease of play, I wish that they would have, if they went through the trouble of giving me a player aid here and a breakdown of what scores for the normal game, which I really appreciate, I think it's great, I wish they would have done the same thing for the advanced rules somewhere instead of only just... They only wrote those out. You know, they're, uh, this is the scoring, same thing as this. But then this advanced scoring isn't anywhere except just written out here, okay? So, again, a few minor things. Lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. There's a lot of fun little puzzles in this to juggle, and I think you're kind of getting what I'm saying with that, you know, with, again, the sort of evolution of the three stages, learning what scores and is worth keeping around. Like, should I cover up this water feature? And get the strawberry plant. Okay, that's more points, certainly. But is there another way to achieve the same thing and keep the water feature around? Do I have enough time to overlay the water feature and then get another one somewhere? If there is one. There's fewer of them later on in the game, so there is that too, you know. They give you all the roots and most of the water features early in the game. And then the puzzle is... Adding plans without covering the water, and that's tricky. I like the scoring rules, uh, the advanced scoring rules, somewhat. I, I, again, I find the first one, this idea of the sculpture garden. Give your art additional space to breathe. When your garden has statues adjacent to gravel, you convert gravel from negative two points to plus one each. Don't love that one. I think that one is just kind of an annoying has hassle. Who cares? Cover up the gravel, you know. I like the birds and the bees. They call it the birds and the bees. I like that one. I think that's good. And then the reflecting pool is an interesting evolution on the water features. I, I, I think that's even better than the original one because then you don't you not only want them next to each other, but you want to make sure you don't break that group up and you will definitely be... Letting other things go by the wayside in order to get a big reflecting pool. So, neat. Overall, I recommend it. It's inexpensive. It's portable. It's a fun little game. It's well made. The component quality is great. Um, it's not perfect, but for its job being a 10-minute filler you can put in your pocket and take with you, I think it works nicely. Now, you want to have a sort of a mind for spatial awareness in those kinds of games. I played with someone who doesn't really like that too much, and it was kind of like, ugh. Um, splitting the paths, the walking paths, is a little sort of visually uh, triggering. But I still like it. So this is going to get a solid 7 out of 10. It's good. That's a seal of approval. I do recommend it if you are looking for another little portable game to throw into your uh, bag for your travels, or just something as a little stocking stuffer or something like that. Strawberry Sunset. This is a nice one. So there you go, everybody. That's it for me. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.